Charles, if I start with uh, you, clearly we've seen a big uh, rally in U.S. equities. For the Fed playing a big part in that, the data staying strong. Europe, uh, we're seeing today uh, another glimpse of that slowing global growth. Do you think the rally we've seen in the U.S. understates the risk uh, of that global outlook that's clearly, uh, clearly getting worse? You have a couple of things going on, Wilfred. You've got Powell pivoting once again, which was one of the three headwinds for the market. You've got the trade tensions between the U.S. and China. We had the meeting last week between uh, a senior uh, policymaker from China and the president. Markets took a constructive interpreta interpretation of that. That was the second factor that moved out the risk curve. The third factor is the deceleration of global economies, which is related to the second factor. That will probably take care of itself with central bank accommodation if the trade situation works out. So, you know, what we've got, the December move down was pretty significant, obviously. November was slightly up, October was down. For the quarter, we were down pretty big. January had the biggest gain since 1989, you know, up, what was it, mm -hmm. um, uh, eight plus percent. REITs outperformed, domestic and international REITs. Most asset classes did very well. Crude oil was up 18 percent. Crude's up, even while the dollar is a little bit lower, because of the expectation that the U.S. economy is decoupled from the global slowdown for now mm -hmm. that we've seen elsewhere. See, do days like today make you want to continue to focus on U.S. equities over anywhere else? No, actually, we're finding opportunities in other markets. Emerging markets specifically is an area that we think can be really interesting right now. You talk about some of those trends that did reverse, which caused the sell-off, meaning the Fed potentially risking over-tightening what that meant for the dollar. That was obviously a huge headwind for China and emerging markets broadly. The other thing to keep in mind from a stimulus and policy perspective, China took advantage of the strength that we saw early last year to tighten policy, both monetary and fiscal. That's obviously shifted. The work that we've done tells us it usually takes about six to nine months before that really feeds through to the economy. So we saw late last year was the impact of that tightening. Now I think heading into this year in an environment where we may get a weaker dollar, that could be a good sign for China and emerging markets more broadly. When we look at the uh, U.S. market, do you like financials? And, and what do you make of the merger this morning between bb and and SunTrust? So without knowing the details of the merger, I think that the fact that there, such a big merger is occurring tells you that there is a positive outlook on the fact that this cycle can extend. I don't think this is the type of deal that you would look to make if you felt that recession was, was imminent. I think when you talk about the financials, you know, obviously the, the, the yield curve situation has been a challenge, but if you believe that growth is stabilizing, and in the fourth quarter we did start to see loan demand begin to pick up, that should be a good environment for the banks. I want to pick up on what you both said, and that was uh, the stimulus around the world. I mean, the notion that there's going to be easy money now, the flip side to slowing growth is that central banks step in, and they make accommodate. They accommodate, right. right? So you have that in China going on. Right. Uh, the fact that the EU has lowered its eurozone growth rate makes it even more likely that the EU will step to the sidelines, like the U.S. I mean, it, we're sort of in a situation where you don't want to fight the central banks. The easy money is coming. That's I mean, right. isn't that the flip side the of all this? The central banks are accommodating for right. different reasons around the world. China has, and PBOC has its own set of reasons. The Powell Fed has its own set of reasons, which were, you could argue, Powell induced because of his far from neutral and um, autopilot comments. We'll leave that to a side for now. And then the BOE has its own issues mm -hmm. with uh, March 29. And the ECB, futures are prob pricing in no rate increase at all this year, even though Mario Draghi and the you know, governing council have said, well, probably next summer we'll be raising. But the markets are saying, no, we don't think so. So the markets are really ahead, and the EU is now acknowledging what PMIs, GDPs, a lot of concurrent and leading indicator economic data and the futures market data are already pricing in. Stephen, what's your top uh, U.S. equity sector pick? Right now, our favorite sector is healthcare. Um, you know, I think that one, you get the the secular growth story, which I think a lot of people are familiar with. But we've seen a little bit of pressure in the sector given concerns around drug pricing. But we really think biotech specifically is going to be the place to target. Big pharma is going to be looking to rebuild pipelines and targeting those smaller companies.